Well, good morning, Greenwich. It is Thursday. It's January 14th. Welcome again to the Basement Academy. Our morning psalm is a little long, and it actually gets picked up in the New Testament, uh, a portion of it by the Apostle Paul in that famous Romans 8 chapter. Um, but let me read this <clears throat> and reflect, kind of unpack it for a moment or two before we dive into our study of the day. So this is Psalm 44 for the director of music of the sons of Korah. They were the worship leaders uh, in ancient Israel. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what you did in their days and days long ago. With your hand you drove out the nations and planted our fathers. You crushed the peoples and made our fathers flourish. It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. You are my king and my God, who decrees victories for Jacob. Through you we push back our enemies, through your name we trample our foes. I do not trust in my bow, my sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God we make our boast all day long, and we will praise your name forever. But now you have rejected and humbled us. You no longer go out with our armies. You made us retreat before the enemy, and our adversaries have plundered us. You gave us up to be devoured like sheep, and have scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for a pittance, gaining nothing from their sale. You have made us a reproach to our neighbors, the scorn and derision of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations. The peoples shake their heads at us. My disgrace is before me all day long, and my face is covered with shame at the taunts of those who reproach and revile me because of the enemy who was bent on revenge. All this happened to us, though we had not forgotten you or been false to your covenant. Our hearts had not turned back, our feet had not strayed from your path, but you crushed us and made us a haunt for jackals and covered us over with deep darkness. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it since he knows the secrets of the heart? Yet for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, O Lord. Why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our misery and oppression. We are brought down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up and help us. Redeem us because of your unfailing love. Psalm 44. It starts out so great, doesn't it? <laughs> the opening verses, we've heard with our ears, our fathers have told us what you did in their days and days long ago and then talking about the victory that God brought as they entered the land. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face that brought victory. And so you know, the victory that Joshua led <clears throat> um, was because of God's promise and God's faithfulness bringing them into the land. But after these opening verses of celebration, now you have rejected and humbled us. You no longer go out with our armies. And so, if you know the history of Israel, if you read the story, you realize that not everything goes well all the time for God's people. And that's kind of want to lead into that a little bit. That's why this is an important psalm. Now, Paul picks up on... Uh, right at the end, verse 22, Yet for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. And that's right before he says, um, 
he's in that thing of if God is for us, who can be against us? Now, there were a lot of people that were against the Christian community, that early church. Paul was one of those at one point, right? When he was Saul the persecutor. And so chapter eight, God is working all things for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. But that's set in the context of the groaning of creation and the opposition that God's people are facing. And what shall separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Shall life or death or heaven or hell, you know, the, the powers here or there? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. That's, that's the section where Paul cites this. Um, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. So Paul grabs Psalm 44 and pulls it into his teaching about how to stand fast in the midst of opposition as a Christian. This, this hope and this confidence we have that even though we are like sheep waiting to be slaughtered. And so, so that's how the Psalms, I talked yesterday about praying our way into the story. And so Psalm 44 takes us back to the history of Israel, but then it points forward, the apostle Paul picks it up. And this is an important Psalm to pray for faithful Christians today. Um, the events that took place last Wednesday in the Capitol, there were many symbols of the Christian faith that were part of that crowd. Crosses, Jesus saves, signs make America godly again, a, a flag that had that phrase on it. And there's no denying that there is a strong um, Christian support for President Trump, especially for his um, for the, the, the questions about the election. Much of that resides, much of that support for President Trump and wanting to overturn the election and that which led to the uh, activities, the riot and, and taking over of the Capitol last week, that the Christians were in that mix. I'm not saying everyone was a Christian and I'm not saying everyone was a faithful Christian uh, per se. But there's a bunch of us who are just minding our own business in life right now, right? We're just trying to follow Jesus. We're trying to go to church. We're trying to love our neighbor. We're trying to do our jobs. And then all of a sudden, there has been, in particularly in these last four years, because of political dynamics, the, the reality for Christians in the public arena has become a more negative experience. Okay, I'm not saying that there's no Christians in the land. I'm saying that there are people who are earnestly and honestly trying to follow Jesus that are not trying to make politics the biggest thing, winning the White House the most important thing. There are Christians who think that's the most important. But for most of us, we're just trying to live our lives you know, if you supported President Trump, then you accept the results of the election. You know, your, your guy lost and you're going to pray for the new president, okay? Because you're a faithful Christian in that regard. And so the, the tide of culture sometimes turns, turns against us. Uh, all this happened to us, though we had not forgotten you or been false to your covenant. There are things that happen sometimes when Christians, we find ourselves opposed by society or by a family member or some other person in our community. We find ourselves set upon as Christians sometimes. All I'm doing is just living my life and I'm not, I'm not you know, being wild and crazy. I'm not making Facebook posts. I'm not, I'm not rioting and... And yet I find the people are against me. And I imagine, I, I recall, think of Daniel, okay? There were a lot of Israelites who were faithful people. It was the priesthood who had become corrupt. The kings had become corrupt. The, the elite leadership of Israel had gone astray. And then all of a sudden, the whole community gets scooped off into Babylon. And so Daniel and his friends, I, I could imagine this psalm being reflective of their experience. All this happened to us. We, we found ourselves in Babylon all of a sudden. We found ourselves thrown into a fiery furnace. We found ourselves in a lion's den, though we had not forgotten you, God, or been false to your covenant. 
such is the reality for the people of faith. And so this is why we need Psalm 44. This is why we need to pray the Psalms because they connect us to the ancient story both of Israel and then of the church, the early church, so that we can then pray effectively in our own day when Christianity is becoming somewhat of a social negative. Okay, once upon a time in our country, remember positive world, neutral world, negative world, that, uh, that, that, that framework of Aaron Wren that we looked at, I don't know, I'm guessing, you know, probably four or five, six weeks ago. We are in a time when to be a Christian in public is to invite scorn and derision and opposition. Uh, the elites in our culture are turning against, have already turned against the Christian faith. Um, many of our institutions are very unfriendly to the faith. And all this happened to us, though we had not forgotten you, O oh God, or been false to your covenant or to Jesus but we are then still called to stand fast. The, we're not gonna play victims, okay? No victims here, right? <laughs> we are gonna stand fast. We're gonna recognize this is a spiritual matter. There are, spirit, there are spiritual warfare, as you could, uh, the Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians 6. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. No other person is your enemy, okay? The enemy of the church is the enemy, okay? And there are spiritual forces that we cannot perceive with our eyes, but this thing plays out on earth. And the tide of culture is changing. And what an opportunity for us to bear faithful witness to Jesus Christ, even if it costs us. And it may cost us. Maybe not our lives, but some Christians are finding their livelihoods that are being uh, called into question or taken away simply because of the belief in these scriptures. So Psalm 44 is an important psalm, and so we offer it in prayer today. Lord, give us strength to withstand whatever opposition comes, and may your right hand and your arm and the light of your face shine upon us, even as we make our way in this part of the journey. Okay, uh, let's uh, lesson seven on the rule of prayer, uh, that is praying the psalms. I so say today, I just, this won't be very long, this portion, but I want to just kind of do some nuts and bolts, okay? For really um, almost two weeks now, started Monday a week ago, a little interrupted in talking about this, but talking about praying five psalms a day. Billy Graham, the story that I heard, you know, encountered Billy Graham, who said he reads five psalms a day in one chapter of the Proverbs. The very next day, I began that. That was back in February of 1992. Here I am, nearly 29 years later, still engaging in this particular practice. And so, the rule of prayer that I am speaking of is to read and then learn to pray those psalms. So read five psalms a day. And then as you read them, it's learning to turn them not just into information you're reading, but a prayer that you are offering. The same way you would read the Lord's Prayer or some other, the, the morning prayer. You know, you read that off the bulletin or off the, the screen that we uh, put in, in, in um, the sanctuary during our worship service. You're reading those words, but you're offering it in prayer. Your, your mind is taking those words and then directing them. You're saying them, but you're directing them to God, okay? And so the same way you would read a written prayer, you're reading these Psalms in an attitude, in a posture of prayer. So in reading this Psalm, I'm reading it, all this happened to us though we had not forgotten you, O God or been false to your covenant. So we're not reading it for information. We're like, hmm, but we're making it our own prayer. So that's that's what I'm asking you to do, to, to, to consider making your rule of prayer. Five Psalms a day in the course of every month, then you will go through the entire book of Psalms. Every month, then as month turns to month, you make a, a monthly journey through the Psalter 
and these 150 psalms become your friends. They become your traveling companions. The typical time required, in my experience, to read and pray five psalms is anywhere between 10 and 30 minutes. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big difference, right? 10 minutes is you know, relatively short. I've been talking maybe now for about 10 minutes, okay? 30 minutes feels a little longer. At the end of this little study, that'll be 30 minutes, okay? But we can find 10 to 30 minutes in our day. Uh, or let me put it away. If you can't find 10 to 30 minutes every day for God, let me invite you to examine your heart and conscience. <laughs> Okay, let me invite you to examine your schedule. If we cannot carve out of this 24 hour day that our Lord graces us with and gifts us with and offers to us every day, if we can't carve out 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, perhaps we need some other conversation to take place, right? So I'm not trying to guilt, I am trying to challenge, okay? I think it's an honest, serious challenge that I have heard in the years past. And I rose to the challenge. I was challenged early on in my Christian walk to carve out daily time for God. Yeah, but I, I need my sleep and you know I'm busy and I've got homework because I started following Christ back in college. No excuses, just make the time, carve it out. Protect it fiercely. Protect it as fiercely as you would protect other things in your life fiercely. You will know when best, for me, it's in the morning. And for me, it's early in the morning uh, when the ki when we had kids, you know, running around our house. As they got older, I mean, when they were little guys, you know, who knows when they're going to wake up. And then when they got to that four, five, six, seven, you know, they started waking up a, a little earlier. And so I just have to keep getting up earlier. And then as school came and the school hour, you know, went earlier. And so now I'm I'm usually up in the 5, 5.30 range. I'm usually at the Psalms, at the Psalter, you know, 5.45, 5, 6 o'clock. So that by, you know, for me, I've got some other practices. So it's about an hour for me. I'm not trying to say that in any braggy way, just to give you some insight. So that by 7, I'm now down here, you know, preparing and, and recording at 7.30. You can do it, okay? You can spend 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes every day reading five psalms. You can do it. You must just do it and keep on doing it. Okay? That's how it becomes a practice. When you do it over time, and all of a sudden that becomes the time you look forward to in your day. It, it, it starts out often as a burden. I've got to go mow the lawn. Ugh, it's like a chore. We're going to talk about that in just a moment, okay? So anyway, five psalms, 10, 20, 30 minutes. Um, don't be surprised if it goes longer, okay? Depending on the day and how long the psalms are, sometimes there's longer psalms that, that, that take a little longer to get through. The suggested tool that you're going to buy, okay? They're out of print. If they weren't out of print, I would buy another 500. I have bought thousands of these books over the years that people for classes I've taught I've given them away and they went out of print I, I, I cannot tell you how disappointed but I would buy them hundreds at a time okay this is the book 31 days of wisdom and praise this is the book you want to buy there's two picture so I'm, I'm for those who are listening on the podcast I'm holding up two different ways. There's a paperback version. There is another um, cover to this, but it's 31 days of wisdom and praise. Don't buy anything else, okay? <laughs> They're out there on eBay and on Amazon. They're used. You might have to pay a few bucks, but um, I, I just checked yesterday, okay? And then here's the hardbound version, and it's got the 31 days of wisdom and praise uh, on the spine, okay? That's the book you want because what it does is it organizes them. You see, it'll say like day, you know, day 12, you know, and then it'll say day 19. And what it does is it organizes them 
this is the magic chart okay and so it's an easy peasy way of understanding so every day there are five psalms and one chapter of the proverbs and so on day one what you do is you just look at the day on the calendar okay so today's the 14th and on the 14th okay it's 14 44 74 104 134 and then proverbs chapter 14. the math is really simple on this thing it's the date plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 okay so 14, 44, 74, 104, 134. Tomorrow, 15, 45, 75, 105, 135. So even if you, you know, misplace your, um, you know, your little book here and you go to your big Bible and open to the book of Psalms, that's the pattern, okay? And so... It's an easy peasy way of doing it. What's helpful about it is it, it drops you into different parts of the Psalter, okay? It doesn't drop you necessarily into each of the five books of the Psalter. If, if each of the books were 30 Psalms long in, in a, a perfect symmetry that way, yeah, you would read from book one, two, three, four, five. That's not how it is, but you are pretty much reading through the course of every day out of different books uh, of the, the Psalter. You're interacting with different of these little mini collections that happen within. And then read Proverbs 14. Read the chapter of Proverbs also. And those, you know, typically are 20 to 25 verses long, short little one-liners that are often kind of uh, Every, every verse is kind of its own little nugget of wisdom and truth. Read five psalms a day, one chapter of Proverbs, just like Billy Graham, okay? And you will not regret it, okay? Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Some of you who've tried to do it, have started to do it, you're going to agree with what I'm getting ready to say. You will struggle for months to get this down. I'm just telling you, okay? Everybody I talk, myself included, starting all the way back in 1992, reading five psalms a day. I was in seminary at the time, okay? So I had a little bit of running start on this thing, <clears throat> a little bit of a head start, um, and I struggled. I struggled to be consistent, okay? So I struggled just to carve the time out. <clears throat> because that's usually what the issue is for most of us. We're just a little lazy, okay? We're undisciplined. It's just, it's just, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Remember Jesus talking to Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane? They couldn't even stay awake with Jesus in his greatest hour. They were just undisciplined. Um, they just weren't in spiritual shape. So you're gonna struggle because you're undisciplined and, and, and you're a little lazy, like, like me too, so I'm not, you know, trying to be scoldy and accusing. This is true of my life as well. We, as humans, are this way. You're going to struggle because I can't relate to the Psalms. Psalm 44. Okay, whatever. I guess you're having a bad day. Uh, you can't relate because it's confusing. Sometimes there's names that are being spoken. You can't pronounce the names. It seems a little irrelevant. The, you know, you won't be able to connect to it because you're in a happy place. And it's a really depressing psalm. Psalm 88, the darkness is my closest friend. Oh, I don't want to read Psalm 88. I want to be happy. I want psalms that make a joyful noise to the Lord. I don't want psalms that are going to bring me down. You need to pray Psalm 88 because there will come a day that you are down. <laughs> and you're going to need, those are the words that you're going to find to pray and God's going to be praying through you. And then when you're not down and you're happy, you're going to pray Psalm 88. And you're going to start praying that for somebody who is down, who is depressed, who is in a, a, a state of a spiritual crisis and distress. So you're going to, Psalm 88 is not going to be praying for you. Psalm 88 is going to be praying for somebody else. Okay. So you're going to struggle for months because you're lazy and undisciplined. <laughs> And you've got other habits and other things, you know, you're, you're going to be tired, you're going to be sick. Just do it. 
10, 15, 20, 30 minutes every day. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. You're going to struggle because some of these psalms are harsh and angry and you're going to recoil. They're going to feel offensive to you. You're going to feel, because I, 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 honestly, some of you will write me and say, it's exactly what happened to me. It's why I don't like the psalms because they're so angry. Psalm 137, dash their babies' heads against the rocks. Some of you will say, I will not pray that because that is inappropriate for a Christian to be praying that. Stay tuned for next week, and I'm going to tell you how to pray the angry psalms, okay? But that's why some of you are going to struggle, because they're harsh, they're angry. Just about every day, because when you're reading five psalms a day, you're encountering a darker psalm, a sad psalm, an angry psalm. You don't get lots of happy psalms, okay? Truth is, there's not tons of happy psalms. Because truth of the matter is, most of our lives is struggle, okay? And sometimes we struggle at, at doing this. In starting the praying of the Psalms, it's boring. I just don't get anything out of it. And we're such a... What is the word I'm going to say here? Um, our society and its abundance and its plenty of physical and material comfort and its abundance of entertainment. We don't know how to be bored anymore, right? If, if we're bored, you know, kids always say, Mom, I'm bored, you know, two weeks into summer vacation, summer break from school, I'm bored. And you know what, how we solve that? Well, tell you what, I have plenty of things to do for bored kids. Uh, my kids learned not to come to dad and say, I'm bored because I got plenty of chores for you to do. If you're bored, I got something for you to do right now. But we are a bored people, which is a spiritual statement. It's a crisis. How could any human being be bored in this world that God has made that is full of wonder and beauty and joy and adventure and mountains and trees and literature and art and poetry and, and hobbies and golf. <laughs> how could any human being ever possibly get bored? And how could we be bored with God? And so, but some of us get bored reading the Psalms. Yeah, I don't get much out of it. That's why people don't come to church. Yeah, I don't get much out of church. You're in the presence of the living God. The fact that you don't get something out of church is not a statement of God or the preacher or the choir or anything. That's a statement on you <laughs> or a statement on me. Again, I don't want to, I feel like I'm being a little scoldy here. I think I've got my dad voice on right now, okay? <laughs> so forgive me, please. But I want to be honest. It will take months to punch through the I can't relate, they're angry psalms, I'm, they're sad psalms, or I'm sad and I don't feel like praying a happy psalm today. Um, I get a little bored. I'm a little lazy and undisciplined, you know. Just press through. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Just keep doing it, keep doing it. I, I, I have to tell myself, you know, I get up and I, oh, I'm going to skip today. Don't skip today, okay? Now, if you do, the genius of this particular tool is don't worry about catching up on yesterday. Just go to day 14, open it up, and do those five psalms. That's the genius of it. This, is, this tool liberated me. Thank you, Aunt Margaret Crabiel. I told you the story. Sent this for my graduation gift. She sent me the, the hardbound, thankfully. It sits upstairs in an, in an enshrined place. It's all torn apart. <clears throat> you, if, if you miss a day, I miss days, okay? I didn't say my psalms on Christmas Day, okay? I'm sorry. I didn't do it, okay? Because I got up and we got going. <clears throat> but if you miss a day... Don't, don't worry about the guilt and the shame of missing yesterday's psalms. You'll catch them next month. That's the beauty of it. You're going to go through. You're going to catch the day you missed. You're going to catch it next month. And you'll miss a day or two next month. And you'll catch that the month after. Just go to the date on the calendar. 
that day plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus the proverb of that day. And then something happens. Poof! It's magic. You break through. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you look forward. Oh, I like day 14. Okay. Oh, I like day 18. Oh, I can't wait. I love the day two Psalms. And so what happens is, because it's those are a little set. That's a little small group of Psalms. Those five travel together, right? And then you join them that day. And there's a, there's a, you're going to find, I, I see, I wonder, I've come to wonder if the psalmist didn't even write it this way, because there are these parallels that happen. Psalm 40 and Psalm 70 are on the same day, day 10. And Psalm 70 is actually the tail end of Psalm 40. It's, it's almost word for word, the exact same psalm. Isn't that interesting? There are days that theme together. Now, I could say, well, it's just because I've done it so long, I see themes that really aren't there. No, you will detect them, and you will detect own little collections. So each day is a small group of friends that travels together, and you join them for a day's worth of journey. And then the next day, a new group of five that you join. So you've got 30 groups of five friends that are somewhat different like all people are different they've got their own little personality each psalm has their own little story their own little personality to it and you journey with them for that day and then you will start to look forward to i'm telling you it's i won't say magic because it's not it's god <laughs> but it's poof all of a sudden you're struggling with it you're struggling with it you're struggling with it and then all of a sudden you're not struggling anymore you're doing it and you look forward to it and these become your friends and you can't imagine missing a day because if you miss a day oh my goodness i didn't get to talk to them this week <laughs> this day this month okay because what ends up happening is a conversation sets up you then are in conversation with god by being in conversation with these five friends okay and then what happens is these psalms will we'll meet you. God will meet you in these psalms on some happy days, but usually on the sad and hard days. And God sustains you. And this is exactly the words. I can't find words, God. You just gave me the words to pray. Okay? Psalm 44. Give me the exact words to express how I'm feeling. I am so sad that the name of Jesus Christ and ourselves as Christians, particularly conservative Christians, traditional conservative Christians, I don't mean that politically, I mean that theologically, we are being accused of things. I'm being accused of something that I haven't done. Okay, I didn't go storm the Capitol, but there are people who are now calling out all traditional conservative Christians. All this happened to us, though we had not forgotten you or been false to your covenant. And so Psalm 44 becomes my prayer for our nation and our church in the midst of this moment in our nation that I wouldn't have thought of myself. But God, through the Psalms, gives me language at this moment, okay? So let me stop there. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this tomorrow, some of the struggles and, and why, you know, how the Psalms can help us to press through to maturity. I'll talk about that tomorrow. Let's close now. Let me encourage you to go to eBay or to Amazon or wherever you can find this in a used bookstore. And I want you to get one of these, <laughs> um, one of these copies of 31 Days of Wisdom and Praise. And there's a little heading in here, um, R. Dean Jones of Spirit Truth Fellowship for encouraging the Bible Society to publish this unique presentation. It's on the, the little title page. I don't know if that's the same Dean Jones that is the actor uh, who was a, a, a very committed Christian, but it might be. Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for these Psalms. Thank you for this opportunity uh, to speak to my sisters and brothers in Christ. What a gift they offer to me in their attentive listening and engagement with these daily studies. And I pray that anything I've said today that is unhelpful, unholy, unworthy uh, will be blown away by the wind of your spirit. But that which is true and helpful, Lord, cause it to abide 
and to bear fruit uh, in time for your glory. And so help us to press on in this good work of prayer and intercession. And Lord, as you have occasion, draw uh, many into this uh, call to pray the Psalms. And so, Father, hear our prayers at this time in our nation and in the life of our church and of our society and in our own lives when it feels like things are happening to us though we have not forgotten you or been false to your covenant. Thank you for Psalm 44 and thank you for the way Paul picked up on it in Romans 8 that nothing, nothing in this world, in this life could ever separate us from your love which is found in Christ Jesus. We give you thanks for that in Jesus' name and offer our prayer together now as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May God keep you, bless you, make his face to shine upon you, stretch out his right hand and his arm towards you for blessing, peace, and protection.